Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Andy Griffith Show, Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. I'd like to remind you that I am in Facebook jail, so I will not be posting on the Facebook page for another six days. And I also want to apologize yesterday for a short little rant and adding politics into this video channel. I promised myself and I promised you, at least those on Facebook, that I would not bring politics into this and it should be an escape from such and I should not have done so. And I don't want anyone else to do so as well. So this will be the last we speak of that. Today's video is on uh, the, the actress that left the business after she was rejected by Barney Fife. Let's get into it. Now, everyone knows that on the Andy Griffith show, Thelma Lou became Barney Fife's soulmate. <clears throat> but in the episode Barney on the Rebound, the deputy almost takes another wife. It all starts with a spat between Barney and Thelma Lou. <clears throat> Barney tries to move too fast with a new girl in town. Soon, Barney's engaged to this new girl and begging his best buddy Andy to get him out of the engagement so he can make things right with Thelma Lou, his true love. Playing Barney's would-be wife was an actress named Beverly Tyler, who in the 40s, may, uh, many predicted, was destined to become one of Hollywood's biggest stars. She was pretty, she could sing, she could act, and critics expected that in the picture she would shine. Her fate seemed sealed, especially because of the way she got discovered, which to many reporters sounded like a truly unbelievable Cinderella story that went like this. Young Beverly Tyler had grown up singing in church choir. When she traveled with her parents and friends, uh, and a friend named Patty to New York, on this trip, they were walking up Broadway when Beverly's friend Patty noticed that they were outside the MGM offices. Patty dared Beverly to go inside and ask for an audition, and her parents were good-natured enough to go along with the lark. So Beverly's dad walked, uh, waited downstairs with Patty while Beverly and her mom climbed up 11 stories to ask for a screen test uh, for their daughter, who came out of nowhere and was definitely not expected. We sat in the office until a talent scout came out and said, well, what can we do for you? Beverly told the International News Service in 1946. I said, I'd like to sing, and, and Mother uh, showed him some clippings about my radio work. He took us into an office, and I sat down at the piano and start, started to play and sing. Halfway through her first song, the talent uh, scout shouted, Stop! Tyler's fingers froze on the keys, believing she had ruined her one shot at stardom. I thought it was all over, she said, but no, he called in Mr. Marvin Schneck, who listened to me and said to Mother, could you accompany your daughter to Hollywood? Once her family got to L.A., Tyler went into hiding, with MGM closely guarding their star in training while she studied singing, dancing, and drama. They didn't want anyone to see her until she was screen ready. MGM felt so strongly about Tyler's top talent that they debuted her as a lead in a film called The Green Years which is one of the most expensive movies to date. Every headline promoting the movie declared Tyler was the next big movie star. However, this fate was not to be. Not because Tyler wasn't good enough, but because she just never got offered enough parts. Audition after audition, she just kept getting beat out for roles on Oscar-winning movies, like the female leads in All About Eve and Sunset Boulevard, which surely would have helped her to take the next step in her career. So after MGM attempts at launching Beverly Tyler as a major movie star, she started appearing on TV in smaller guest roles through the 50s. And all that time, Tyler stayed away from serious romances, focusing more on acting than settling down in a series <clears throat> with a series of actors who courted her, including Mickey Rooney, Peter Lawford, and Roy Calhoun. These were the men whom Tyler were re uh, rebounding from when she appeared on The Andy Griffith Show in 61, to try to woo Barney Fife. Instead, she ended up meeting the love of her life, Jim Jordan Jr., and when they got married in 62, she abruptly quit acting for good to devote herself to her family. Jordan was the son of 1930s radio star, stars of Fibber McGee and Molly, Jim and Mary Jordan, 
He wasn't an actor, but in Tyler's arms, he became the prince in the real world who gave her Cinderella story a happy ending. They stayed together until his death in 1998. Not a lot about the Andy Griffith show on there, I admit, but I just found this story very interesting. And what a way to start a career just on a, a dare. That's all I got for you. I hope, you, <clears throat> I hope you're going to have a great weekend. I hope you, uh, uh, I don't know, here in Kentucky, we're going to have lots of sunshine and good weather. So I hope you do too. And I hope you enjoy it and get out and do things. And, uh. Don't forget to subscribe. Share this out on your Facebook. Thank you. Have a great weekend. God bless. I'll be praying for you. Mm -hmm.